welcome to this very windy episode of One Foot in Front. I'm Faith McCann, and in this series, we travel across the U.S. to discover cities that boast history and a variety of cultural influences that make where we call home vibrant and unique. I'm so glad you're here. Oh my God. Yeah, Faith, geez, move behind the building. <laughs> okay, so I can't guarantee what my hair is gonna look like or not look like, so this is what it is. <laughs> Today's journey takes us to the jewel of Sunset Bay, Santa Monica, California. We'll visit the famous Santa Monica Pier and learn of the land's history, from its appropriation from the Indian tribes that inhabited the land for centuries to the mobsters who ran offshore gambling operations. Then we'll visit the Heal the Bay Aquarium and meet some very excited sharks. Originally inhabited by Gabrielino and Chumash Indians, the Santa Monica we know today started from humble beginnings before being passed around and bought by different owners and finally ending up owned by Colonel Robert S. Baker. Previous to Santa Monica's founding, the land was owned and inhabited by the Tongva tribe, Tongva meaning people of the earth. Santa Monica's colonization began in 1542, and the Tongva tribe's decline continued into 1604, when Spanish explorers sailed into Santa Monica Bay. Between the Spanish monks and explorers, the Tongva people were forced against their will to march to San Gabriel with the purpose of building a mission. This led to them being renamed Gabrielinos. Horribly, in the Spaniards' efforts to colonize the land, families were split up, chiefs and leaders were killed, and European diseases that the Tongva had no immunity to further declined the population. By the end of the 19th century, the abundant 250,000 Tongva people had been decimated to only 9,000. In 1822, the land was passed from Spanish rule to the Mexican Republic under private ownership. And in 1828, it was retitled Rancho San Vicente y Santa Monica. During California's gold rush years in 1849, Colonel Robert S. Baker came out west, like many others, to start his coal mining supplies business and begin cattle raising. Searching for more land for said ventures, he purchased Rancho San Vicente y Santa Monica from the then owners Don Francisco Sepulveda's heirs in 1872 for $55,000, almost $1.2 million in today's money. A mere two years later, a wealthy senator wanted in on what he agreed would become a great commercial center of the Southwest. U.S. Senator John P. Jones of Nevada moved to California and purchased three-fourths interest in Colonel Baker's ranch for $162,500, a whopping $3.7 million today. On auction day for the Santa Monica Pods, a very vivacious auctioneer gave some riveting speeches with the intent of painting a picture for the then buyers who were only surrounded by barren ranch land. He was so good at it, in fact, that people became enamored with the idea of moving here. That within a few short weeks, houses and shops started to spring up, a general store was built, and a newspaper was even founded. Decades later, Santa Monica built a pier in 1909, and it was the fascination of its day. By 1916, a Charles Luff, who built Coney Island's first carousel, built the Hippodrome, which now houses a stately wood carousel of its own. In 1933, the Santa Monica Yacht Harbor was born. Fishing boats, shuttles to Catalina, and of course yachts packed the harbor. Shortly after its creation, the harbor became the home base for a shuttling service to some offshore gambling operations run by mobster Tony Cornero. In 1939, the then Attorney General Earl Warren led a legal battle to shut them down. But Cornero wouldn't go down without a fight. It had to be a war. Known as the Battle of Santa Monica Bay, after a three-day standoff, the last of Cornero's fleet, the Rex, was raided by government officials. Agents threw the gambling machines and tables overboard, and Cornero only surrendered because apparently he, quote-unquote, needed a haircut. 
One of the main reasons I came out to the pier on a Sunday afternoon was to visit the Heal the Bay Aquarium, located underneath the front portion of the pier, to check out their modified patio offerings. Due to county and CDC guidelines, Heal the Bay is only open on the weekends and only showcasing their outdoor portion of the aquarium, including tide pool creatures, and an exhibit on sharks' life cycles featuring shark pups. Today, Ian enlightened me to what kind of sharks were greeting me and which they were waiting on to hatch. We have horn sharks. So right in front here, this is a swell shark. They can swell up really big, kind of like a puffer fish. By swelling up, it makes them look bigger and more intimidating. And then the predator is discouraged. And if that doesn't get them, they can then also contract and then spit out all the water that they swelled up with. Oh yeah, so yeah. Sometimes you get the sharks coming up to people and spitting out water at them. Oh, I see. So that's probably what that one was trying to do to me is <laughs> He was like, who are you? I want to spit water at you. But I was thinking, you just wanted to be on camera, but really you said, what are you doing? And these are actually live eggs, so we do have live swell sharks in there that will sometimes move around. Ooh, weird. That's a little alien-ish. The round thing here is the yolk. So kind of like you get in a chicken egg, okay. you have a yolk in there, and they feed off of that yolk as they get bigger. So this is the youngest egg here. There's a teeny little shark at the top, okay. and then as they get bigger, they start feasting away at the yolk, so that once they're this big, there's no more yolk left for them, and then they know it's time to hatch. Oh, it's time to hatch because there's no more food left. Ian, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for coming. If you're interested in learning more about any of the landmarks that you've seen in today's episode, please check out my teeny photos on TikTok. And be sure to subscribe to my blog and follow me on Instagram for more photos and historical facts. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of One Foot in Front with me, Faith McCann. And remember, if you keep one foot in front, you'll always be halfway to your next adventure. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.